Mass airflow signal analysis is one of the more critical things to test. We're going to talk about it, but first of all, we have to talk about when you use this test. You use it when you think the fuel delivery is wrong because of a sensor input error, like the mass airflow. You have some feeling it might be wrong. Math problems sometimes set a lean fuel code without setting a mass airflow code, but if you have a mass airflow code, certainly go ahead and do that. And let's talk about what types of mass airflows we have. Mass airflow sensors generate a signal that represents the airflow entering the engine. This is very important. It calculates the air entering the engine and produces a signal representing that value. We're going to look at the most common types. Some airflow sensors represent airflow as a digital signal. Frequency varies with airflow. Best way to do that is to measure frequency with a scan tool or a multimeter. We're not going to discuss that here because it's not the ideal way to use a lab scope. But airflow is represented with a voltage, and now that it can be tested with a lab scope, and it's used to capture quick changes in voltage. And we're going to show you some diagnostic approaches of using rapid changes. We'll be talking about that. But where do you connect? We're going to look about where to connect, but first let's talk about all the circuits we got here. We got a four-wire sensor, a little more than we normally see. Here's B plus at the top. This airflow requires battery voltage to operate. It's really important that you have good B plus and a good power ground. If you notice the bottom down here, we have a power ground. We have fixed numerous bad airflow problems by fixing those two areas. Do not ignore battery plus and ground. It can cause things to be wrong. Now we've got two other wires. We've got sensor ground that's there for the reference for the PCM to reference the mass airflow signal. Now the mass airflow signal is what we'll be looking at with a lab scope. We have one here for you. We're doing a two second per division trace and we're looking at a situation where we're going to do a quick snap. This pattern is produced by a one second snap acceleration test. We prefer the two second snap acceleration test and we'll tell you more about it why. You will see minor changes as we change the time of the scale, but don't let that confuse you. It's all the same. Now let's break this power pattern down to understand the parts. On the left over here is the idle voltage before the snap test is done. We're looking for normal idle voltage and you can find specs on that. Then we come up to this point here. We start the snap test and we snap the throttle open real quickly. Only holding open for one second and it goes to a peak value up here after a second. Remember these are two seconds per division. So this is a one second snap. A little fast in our book. But we will talk about looking at a number of these different things. It turns out to be 3.69 volts. Our specification for a Ford, which this is in this case, is it gets a minimum of 3.7. And this is by all practical purposes there. Now, low voltage is caused by a dirty airflow sensor. A new airflow sensor will go over 4 volts on a 2 second snap. So keep in mind when you clean this, it's a heated element. Do not clean it when it's been powered up. You're going to clean it. Use something that leaves no residue. And there's a few people manufacturing cleaners that can do that. If for lack of anything else, you can use a cleaner for brake clean because it's a low residue cleaner. But you must clean it when it's cold and unheated. Mass airflow that failed this test sometimes set a lean fuel code without setting a mass airflow code. So be aware of that. And we're going to be talking about other manufacturers. We're going to be testing the same way. Now an additional symptom is that mass airflow sensors that fail this test usually have low calculated barrel frequency on a Ford. Remember Ford at sea level has about 159 hertz and you have to correct it for your level. It reads just like the old time barrel However, it is calculated from the mass airflow. So since it's calculated using mass airflow, one of the clues you can see is the frequency for barrel being wrong. Now some of the newer Delta PFE sensors have a barrel reading built in and this test will not work when you look at the barrel frequency. But we can still look at our signal. Now here's a vane airflow. It's a mechanical device that moves. We sped this up a little bit. It's four times faster than the other one. We get to see more detail. We like to go with nice and fast. Now here's the same thing. We're at idle. Come over here. We start the snap. Snap goes up. We reach our maximum voltage. As you can see, it's in the same general vicinity we just saw. You're seeing a pattern. You do see a bit of a dip here that we didn't see in the main airflow. That depends. We'll do a slower trace to watch for that dip. 
but this is the same thing. We're going to capture maximum voltage. This is a one second test done on a Nissan. Again, we sped it up a little bit. It's 200 milliseconds. We can see it faster. And you see a very slight dip. Here's our idle voltage right at one volt. Then we snap accelerate and we go up to our maximum 3.5. Very much like the Ford. Very close to the value of a Ford. You see a small dip down. What we don't want to have is too big of a dip down during this snap. And we have some better ways of doing that. Here's a two second snap and we really prefer the two second snap. It gives us more detail. We're looking at one second per division. There's our idle voltage, there's the start of our snap, and we snap it open and there's our max voltage. It goes up where we would expect it to be. This is right at four volts. This is a good mass airflow. This is what you should be seeing on a mass airflow that's operating correctly. Now the other thing to do is a smooth increase. Now, this is a nice smooth engine rev up and back down over a few seconds. This is about one, two, three, four, five seconds. Revving it up, easing it down. Now you notice that little bit of dip there. To be sure, put TPS in here with this. Here we've added TPS in. Now we're doing a smooth increase and a smooth decrease. But as we look at this mass airflow signal, we notice that with a throttle going smoothly up, no wobbles, we have a significant drop in airflow. It did not go up as high as it should. This mass airflow has a significant dip where it goes in the opposite direction of the TPS. They should increase smoothly, taking a second to reach the three point volt range. All this should happen very nice and smooth. It's not a snap open real quick. As you can see, the airflow bobbled down below. We think we have found the stumble off idle. Replace the mass airflow, fix the problem. So you've seen a couple different things now, a couple ways to diagnose. We showed you several ways of doing a mass airflow signal. We've tried to show you that different airflow sensors behave in a similar way. We can't say you put the same specs on all of them. You're going to have to develop your own specs for different makes and models. But you saw the quick response test with a two second snap. That's our preferred way of doing it. You saw the sweep test with throttle position and found a failure where the map did not uh, correlate with it. So utilize these diagnostics in working on mass airflow and you're going to be surprised how many problems you find.